Hey guys, it's Friday. I just got off a 15 hour flight back from Lithuania and something I've been waiting for for a year and a half is finally here. I'm really excited. Just showed up in the mail about a half hour ago. This isn't gonna be your normal unboxing video. Today we get the Red Hydrogen One. I was one of the lucky few people that ordered the titanium. I actually ordered it within three hours of them announcing it. It took a little while for it to get here, but it's finally arrived. The great thing that Jim did from Red, uh, CEO, is because we ordered the titanium, there was a production issue, and they actually ended up sending us aluminum models for free. Uh, so I got this aluminum model, and then once titanium's ready, ETA, TBD, I'll go ahead and get that titanium as well, and I can keep this. So big shout out to Red. I'm gonna use this phone today. I'll let you guys know what I think, first impressions. I'm not gonna do a typical unboxing. You can find plenty of those videos. All right, now that we got everything unboxed, it's officially time to say goodbye to the Note 8 and hello to the Red Hydrogen. First impression, uh, it's, it's pretty big. Let's see how it boots up. I figured it's a good way to get an idea of what the overall camera looks like. Right now we're using the front-facing camera. It's pretty impressive it'll record at 4K front-facing or rear-facing cameras uh, up to 30p. If you go down to 1080p, it'll let you record up to 60 frames a second. There's also some uh, cool time-lapse features, so we'll show you those as well. Tonight we've got a pretty cool Halloween event, so I'll get some recording there as well. It'll show you how the low light works. <laughs> All right, so I've been using the Hydrogen One for the whole weekend now. It's about Sunday afternoon, which gave me two days of real world use with the phone. And I gotta say overall, it's been a pretty fun experience. I'm coming from the Samsung Note 8, which is in my opinion, a very powerful phone. Uh, it's been great to use that the last year. I came from iPhones before that. So I'm really happy with what I'm seeing out of the red so far. Uh, first and foremost, the battery life is, is pretty amazing. So I've been running all day and it's still at 80% right now. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, that's pretty impressive because I've been using the phone a lot obviously as well since it's brand new. Some of the downsides I've noticed, so coming from the Note 8 where, you know, the screen really takes up the entire phone, now seeing the thick bezels, it's a little bit of a transition. I think I'll get used to it, but I do kind of miss that all screen design. Overall, what I think you're really wondering about is how does the 4View work on it? I gotta say, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's not something I really can describe well. I've tried to film it and it's, again, not something I think Jim from Red wants you to see in that context. Really go experience it for yourself. I will say it's incredibly impressive. I went out uh, Friday night to a happy hour and I showed a lot of people it and the expressions that people had to the phone were pretty amazing. I haven't experienced something like that in maybe 10 years even, where you show someone your phone and they're just blown away by the experience. Um, they're like, what, what is that? I can't believe it. I think it's a really cool, unique experience. I could see over time it evolving, eventually becoming the native TV format, maybe 10 years from now, who knows? Really cool to see things in 3D without any type of glasses. To be aware of kind of how it works, it feels like it does downsample a little bit. So if you look at the resolution itself, it says, you know, it's recording in 4K, but when you actually pop on that 3D image, it looks maybe like 480p. You know, not necessarily the worst thing. Um, it is something to be aware of. It's really cool. It's not necessarily what you're used to with full 3D experience on a TV, but that does require glasses. It requires equipment. 
Um, and to be able to make that type of content on the fly, I think is really where Red was aiming. And it's been very compelling to see that and how it's gonna evolve over time. There's not a ton of content today. I think that's something that's gonna come in the future as Red really promotes this phone. The other things about this phone in general, it's very snappy, it's very fast. Yeah, I know it's got the Snapdragon 835, which is last year's model, but I've had no issues with that. Everything fires up pretty quickly. One issue I wanted to talk about, I don't know if it's specific to AT&T or this phone. This phone has HD voice. I've been able to call certain people with other HD voice compatible phones, specifically iPhones. Works very well, it's very clear. However, with AT&T and this phone right now, if you try to use HD voice, I couldn't call my voicemail. I couldn't call 1-800 numbers. Um, very random numbers in general just seem to have an issue with HD voice enabled. The great thing is you can disable that. So you go into settings, disable, and from that point on, I've had no issues with call and it's still running on 4G for data. So it's not actually slowing anything down. So overall, it's you know an issue. It was something initially I was pretty freaked out about because I didn't think those would work. But once I figured out that little tip and trick, make sure you disable HD voice if you're on AT&T. I've had no issues with calls or anything else since then. Other impressions from the phone, Coming from an OLED display, I gotta say I miss the always on screen. That's something I got used to. I love being able to see notification icons, battery life, everything, you know, right from the fly at any point in time. Something I've had to give up. At the same time though, the colors on here, and I still, I think Samsung makes some of the best phone displays, if not the best, the colors seem to be better to me. I did find for me turning on night mode to the lowest setting is a little more natural. It seems like there's a blue hint if you go the whole way up and just leave it as the default settings, I like more of that natural, you know, I calibrate my monitors, I calibrate my laptops, uh, turn on night mode and just slide the bar all the way to the left so it's very incremental. It'll put a slight yellow hue, you could say, but it's really a more appealing, more natural color to look at uh, across the gamut. As well, it's a little bit easier on your eyes. So again, my preference, something I would recommend, turn off HD voice, turn on night mode. Other than that, I really haven't had to tweak the phone too much. It's been great. I gotta say the fingerprint reader on the side of the phone here. Let me just show you how quick the fingerprint reader on the side of the phone works. So you can see it logged in there. You even saw the lock screen for maybe half a second. That's actually not even the norm half the time. There's another example. It actually unlocks the phone pretty much as you're clicking. Nine times out of 10, you don't even see the lock screen. So it's pretty impressive. They incorporated it in a good way. I found no issues coming with a fingerprint on the back to now moving it here on the side. It actually, if anything, feels a lot more natural to me because it turns on the phone, reads your fingerprint so it's still secure and logs in pretty seamlessly right away. Uh, so I've really enjoyed that as well. It's been a good experience. No qualms about that at all. So the overall interface, it's pretty stock Android and that's been a great experience so far. They do a great job with the Pixel. There's a reason it sells so well. Samsung, I think has made a lot of improvements over the years and that's why I got the Note 8. They've done some good tweaks. I've gotta say though, a lot of it I don't miss. This really just does a great job at being Android and doing things well. Uh, everything I've needed it to do so far is great. The other great bonus here is you get Google Now, from a swipe from the home screen. You don't have to launch a separate app at all. Pretty much everything's really seamlessly integrated and again, works very well. It's using Chrome as your default browser. It's using Google Photos as your default photos. For me, those are what I use anyway, so it makes a lot of sense. It makes it a lot easier. So let's talk a little bit about the weekend. I've been able to use time-lapse on this phone, which is a pretty amazing feature so far to see. It's very similar to what I'm seeing out of my GoPro Hero 7. The stabilization isn't quite there as much, but if you do it the right way, you really don't notice anyway. The other thing is it's very specific how you wanna configure it to capture frame rates and the number of images per second. So the time-lapse itself is highly configurable and to be able to have that right in your pocket anytime you need it is a pretty compelling feature as well. So the camera overall in here is pretty amazing. Something to be aware of is if you wanna shoot for view content, from the back facing camera, you're gonna to have to shoot it in landscape, which makes sense, it's how the cameras are aligned. And if you wanna shoot from the front, it's gonna be portrait. 
again, they made intelligent decisions here. It makes sense, again, how the camera array is that you're gonna have to have the separation a certain way, orientation. Uh, and I've found no issues with that so far. It's a quick reminder, the camera app itself knows which way you have to turn it before you can enable those features. So I've had no issues remembering which way to do it as well. So if you snap a photo in four view, you can still share it with people, you can still upload it. It's gonna give you both images to choose from later on. I also found the resolutions are pretty exciting because the front facing camera is gonna do 4K and the back facing camera is also capable of 4K. So there's no upsampling, you have no issues trying to shoot 4K, whether using the front or the back camera. Um, pretty exciting as well for someone like me who wants to have a camera in their pocket at all times and be able to add content to the vlog. So let me go ahead and show you some images and some videos from the weekend that I took. I wish I could show you the four view content. Obviously it's not supported here on YouTube. You really have to have this phone as an example. I've been impressed with the camera. I'm really curious to see what DxO Marks rates it. I got some good low light examples of both video and photos from a Halloween event we went to in LA. So this is the LA Hayride, Haunted Hayride. Uh, it was pretty fun as well. The noise was controlled. It's not gonna be as good as, you know, the Sony a7R 3 that I'm shooting on here. Um, but for a phone, it's pretty darn impressive. Again, I think DxO Mark, when they release their full review of this, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see how it really stacks up because I don't have necessarily their criteria for all of their cameras used. But I could see this just blowing it out of the water. And that's really the point here. It's a red, it is a camera at its heart. Um, as well, over time, it's gonna be modular, it's gonna have upgrades, so you can plug things into the bottom here. You can potentially upgrade the camera module on it as well, so it's not like it's static. This can only get better over time. All right, so in summary, I love this phone. It's definitely gonna be my daily driver. It's changing the way I think about content, think about creativity, and for me as a content creator, that's one of the most compelling reasons to use this. I think being able to show it to people and just seeing their reactions and seeing them freak out, seeing 3D content without any type of glasses, seeing the fact that you can actually record it in real time, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have this in my pocket for the foreseeable future. So big shout out to Red. I think it's a great win here. Yes, are there things I miss about the Note 8? Sure, but at the end of the day, are they compelling enough for me to switch back? Absolutely not. Uh, more to come. Let me know if you want to see any other examples with this phone specifically, any other content. You'll see I kind of rearranged my studio here, so I have my lenses in the back. I've got my drone and a few other Olympus cameras up here as well that I can review. Let me know what you guys want to see next. Let me know if there's other reviews of content. If you want to see something in LA, I can go out and explore. Go ahead and click that subscribe button so you can follow along as I release more content. And I'll see you next time.